and welcome back to my channel. Welcome, shall I welcome myself back? Sorry. Uh, like, I have been so caught up with life, socially, academically. Mental health has been an absolute shambles. 2019, let's just call it 2019 so far as a shambles. Um, so, the last video I did was talking about sexual assault, my cheating ex. Well, guess what, lads? Uh, let's make it two, two cheating exes now. Yeah, I have been in three messed up relationships this year. I've got involved with the wrong type of people. Um, I'm currently on my fourth relationship. That sounds quite bad, I do know. But at the same time, this guy, Alex, he does want to be on my channel. He knows about my channel. He doesn't judge me. He's the most sweetest guy. Makes so much effort into me. This is like so new and like the past three have affected like affects my brain thought process quite a bit like i overthink a lot of things i'm like scared he'll leave me like toxic relationships are the absolute worst i think it will be quite nice if i make it to two months with alex i think that thought process will sort of break apart quite slowly it's gonna be hard and that is just a summary of all three i'm not gonna mention their name talk through the negative side of things of where i've been what's been going on sort of a life update so on the positive side of things this year has been all right for my anxiety um so it has improved um in so many different ways i've been able to get on a bus by myself and now so this year i was able to get on a bus with my friends then I started getting a buses on my own. Uh, this would like this was only during the times when it wasn't like quite busy because I know like when I finish sixth form, my bus is like fully packed and stuff, and it's taken me a while. So like when I went to counselling this morning, my bus was pretty full and stuff. That it was okay, and like I was able to manage that and stuff. So that was quite different. Um, that happened. Uh, what else happened this year? I finally went swimming for the first time in about three or four years. I used to be really quite good at swimming, but then self harm got involved. So I was like, no, not, I'm not going like swimming because of my scars. And I went swimming the first time for Senate Parks. That was quite a different, like a new experience. I really enjoyed it, and I will happily go swimming again. Um, I did a bit of public speaking this year in front of a crowd of a few people and now the biggie happened. I So uh, I do post this on my Instagram a lot that I'm part, I am a young commissioner of a youth advisory board in Norwich because I'm a Norwich girl. Um, but currently now me and uh, this other person, we have become co-chair for this year it's it's a new experience for me it's gonna i definitely think it will boost me because it's finally my last year on the board i do i would be able to stay on the board for another two years however due to the fact that i'm going off to uni next year i don't think um, I won't be able to because I am actually going to plan to move away for uni, which I got onto in a bit. So I'm currently co-chair for 2019 to 2020, so August to August. Um, I've also started going to the gym. I have been an absolute cock up of going to the gym this year. Due to the fact that this whole summer I've been paying for it, but I haven't actually gone but in May, I did actually manage to go to the gym by myself. And that was also the very first time that I went to the gym in short sleeves. I'm super proud of myself for doing that. I know, like, I'm, I'm quite embarrassed to show them off. Um, but it's part of me. It's, it's who I am. Um, I am going to get tattoos to cover, like, certain points of them. But, yeah, that is pretty much... Also, I should be coming a volunteer at my local hospital. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed that goes well. 
because I just want to get a little bit more work experience for the course I want to do. So moving on to that, academic side of things. So they are the positive for my anxiety, a bit of my mental health. I will move on to the side of depression, don't worry. So to um, towards my like personal statement sort of things. So I am planning to go to uni next year to study um, children's. My first choice is actually Northampton now. Uh, when I visited on the open day, I fell in love with it. So yeah, it's goal teaching the predicted grades of BCC and my predicted. So the grades they want are BCC and the predicted grades I've been given is BBC. Uh, UEA is my second choice still, even though that is triple B. However, we'll see where that goes with that. However, the rest on my list is uh, Bucks New University, City University of London, and. Keel, Keel or Keely, don't. So there are my options for university. Um, study children's nursing. However, the Keel one is actually, if my mocks goes to fail in January, then I will put that as the insurance one. The depression side of things. That's it's quite of a roller coaster. It's a bit up and down here and there, really, sort of. Um, so I did, was actually going to go through with an overdose this year, but I stopped myself. I'm super, super proud of myself that I did that. I was like, I'm not going to let this person get to me. That was my sexual assaulter. Um, I'm super proud that I got through with it. And my self-harm this year has been, ever since about April onwards, it has been barely anything. Like, there have been, like months here and there there's been like one or two occasions i think the whole of this month has only been two occasions and i'm super proud of myself for that because i remember during my gcse's it was like every single day so to get that far um is quite hard um but i'm super proud of myself so i do i do get i still do get suicidal thoughts as well and i'm not gonna thank mental health services absolutely not I absolutely hate them. They are so underfunded. They treat you like absolutely nothing. I think me and my friend, and I'm not going to mention, we fall between the cracks. That I know they are the worst in Norfolk, but they treat me like absolutely nothing. Um, I had an appointment yesterday. Basically, I wanted to leave. I wanted to shout. I told them that I hate the service. They... They just, they're very inconsistent, they're horrible, <laughs> like, they won't put me on meds, they tell me all different types of lies, they're like, you're too young, you're too complicated, I oh, will refer you to this group, we'll discharge you, what do you want, it's just like, I don't know what I want, like, I'm coming to you for help, I don't know, like, can you, like, give me some examples, can you, like, guide me, but you just, like, nah. You don't know what you want. We've changed our service. I'm like, yeah, cool, you've changed your service. You've caught me on a bad day. But you also weren't like, I was like, they were like, oh, we work as, like, we were on a goal basis for short term. And it's a bit like, well, maybe it gives me some specific goals because my mind is very broad. I don't really go specific. So if you can. I'm gonna hide for the best because my camera just kind of died on me. Completely forgot what I'm talking about. But I know I was talking about mental health services. And they're just complete shambles. Like, still to this day, very, very shocked that of why have I not been sectioned for drinking toxic five times in about a week? But you know, I can't actually remember like the statistics anymore. Like, I've basically moved on. Also, before, like, another like thing on my mental health, um, I actually got nails, acrylic nails two reasons that i always forget the reason or like one of them one is to stop biting them because i tend to bite them but recently i've started biting them again i'm like i shouldn't really be biting these they're acrylic um like i used to bite them and tear my nail and stuff so they'd be like very short and the other reason is i wanted to prevent myself from purging so i think in my mental health story video i did talk about that um and that is one of the things I wanted to kind of help myself with um that they have helped me and i'm also getting them done for tomorrow because i'm going to a festival for the breakfast 
finally, um, relationship side of things. <laughs> relationship side of things, bit of a shambles. So I've been involved with my sexual assault this year. The guy that I lost my virginity to, that wasn't the best experience. And I think the worst of it all is because the because I didn't have much experience in that type of area of the, the land of sex, basically. I'm just going to talk how I would normally talk to anybody. Um, it was quite difficult. And because I've been involved with a few different projects or like professionals this year, it has definitely been a massive like learning curve of how to know what consent is. And I definitely feel that... The pressure was there, the force was there, and on certain occasions I did not properly consent. Um, with that whole situation, I have pretty much moved on. Um, it is quite still a difficult thing to go through. Um, I'm never going to fully forget it, I'm never going to fully move on. But at the same time, it doesn't affect me as it used to, where I would constantly get reminders and it would upset me to the point of crying. Uh, it is definitely like taken me many months it still haunts me it's still a horrible experience it definitely affects my relationships and i feel like alex at the moment i'm sorry i love you lots you're definitely in the very fire line due to the fact that all three relationships before you have been very very toxic so that happened we're not mentioning any names but i absolutely hate you and you're a horrible person and i hope you have learned from it uh, I kind of can't really chill about that. I would like to apologise for that. Due to the fact that I, me, hello, I'm the very nicest person on earth. That's in my past. I'm leaving it in my past due to the fact that I don't want anything like that to ever happen again. It's definitely made me more aware. But at the same time, he is in my past. He's staying in the past because the police just can't do their job, can they? Uh, second guy, bit of a psycho, harassing. Hmm. 100% but you know in the story of a nutshell three months so three weeks ago three months on from when I broke up with him he is still obsessed me um there have been many occasions where he's messaged me saying I love you I miss you oh there has been times where I like you're an attention seeker I never loved you I stayed with you because I didn't want to hurt you and it's been like you mate you hurt me mate if you didn't love me you should have broke up with me like, my point is, if you didn't love someone, you break up with them, you don't go cheating on them. Even though it wasn't physically, you're asking other girls for sex, you're asking for nudes, you're asking to meet up for sex. Like, it just doesn't happen. You know, told people that we want to break when we want, but you know, I'm glad someone came forward and then we found out the truth for the rest of them. But like, my point is, like, you constantly, like, they, he constantly... Uh, about three weeks ago, he messaged me on Snapchat on a different camera, was like, you hate me soon figured out who it was i was like yeah sure i was you on your main account never did i just blocked that account when he left um then another account pops up i'm like oh my god is he like making new accounts here or has he just like got a list of all the accounts he's made or the fact i feel like he stores my snapchat like he has a list of all these different snapchat names and who they're under like i like he probably has my snapchat name stored on a piece of paper probably or his notes um but yeah um the another account pops up i'm like oh my god is he not gonna leave me alone so then i eventually did add it to my account we having a conversation he was like do you miss me do you, um how would you feel if i came around do you still love me i thought you were happy i thought you moved on it didn't tell the reason why i broke up the other guy the following after for cheating he was calling me names like sex freak i was like no i wasn't you basically a lot of the time i feel like it was very pressurized and a lot of the time was very more towards, it was like more towards chores. Like it was a bit of a chore to do. Um, I'm glad things ended. Honestly, I have never felt better. So eventually the next day I blocked him because uh, this conversation ended up from about 10 o'clock one night to 3am in the morning and then I fell asleep. I was like, good. Then he woke up. Um, so around three o'clock, I was really scared. He was outside my window. I was on FaceTime to Alex and I was like, oh my God, what's going on? This At this point, I was not actually with Alex. I was basically telling my ex that um, 
I am going on a date. I was going I was going out to an animal sanctuary that day. Um he's like, if you think I was going on a date when I wasn't, I was with my like my dad fan. Um so that was a bit weird. He was basically really controlling. And I also would like to mention one thing about him is he has a he had an obsession with nails. Um so I do have fake nails like I mentioned. However, when I was with him I would refuse to get my nails done. I didn't actually get my nails done until the I was with the new guy after my mock. So this was like 13th of June when uh, I started getting my nails done and I'd broken up with him since about April. So wasn't anything to do with that. Um, and I was like, I'm not gonna get back with someone that is obsessed with nails. Like he also joined the messages. So he was like, send me a picture of it in your nails and you can ask anything you like. like no, hun, I'm not going to send you a picture of my nails because I know what you're going to do with them and I'm not going to let myself be that disgusting. So that was also one of the reasons why I wasn't going to actually meet up with him. And he was like, how would you feel if I uh, came over? Do you, want, do you want me to stay over? And I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. My parents hate you. Um, and you basically use me to pass some time. So what if you love me and miss me? You wasted it. You wasted your 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 chance. You blew it. I walked. Um, that's the whole situation. That then I blocked that account. Then oh dear, what comes along? Another account. Four accounts here. Um, then I blocked that one. Then another account comes up, and I'm like, oh my god. And then he didn't. Then that was the fifth account. However, the following day, I was in Weatherspoons. I was in my six one friends. Oh, here comes another account. Block that. That was the end of that. <laughs> what is the coincidence? Is he happened to get on my bus the next um, week, so, and then a sort later he gets on, and I'm like, oh my god! If he sits next to me, if he talks to me, I will flip my. I will just flip. Luckily, he didn't. I was a sweating mess because I'd just gone to the gym. Luckily he didn't, luckily he sat upstairs, he didn't talk to me. But he clearly had a staring problem with me and I was like panicking. I was like, oh my God. So when I got off the bus, I actually phoned up Alex. My mum was outside, so she saw him. And we were just like, what the, what the hell, what a coincidence. Um, so yeah, that happened to that. I haven't heard anything from him since and I'm glad I haven't. Uh, moving on to the third one, I just, I've just not had pure luck with guys here. Uh, I was talking to a guy for about a month and then we decided to, to make it official. Little did I know he was actually dating someone else. Um, so why did he get in a relationship with me? I do not know. Why did he meet up with me? I do not know. It's a bit like, why did he bother? If you're with someone else, don't talk to other girls. Break up with them. No matter what. I, when I found out the truth, um, he was like, oh yeah, babe, can you go, can you go do my streaks? A bit like that, because he like, no data left. Um, and stuff. So I was like, yeah, sure. Um, so I went out, I was actually out with my friend Jazz, and then I was like, why is there so many girls in his Snapchat? Like, I know that's, like, a bit, like, yeah. So, it's, like, so many girls on the streets. And then I found out this girl. And I was, like, what? I was, like, in shock. I felt so disgusted at myself. I felt awful that all these things were happening. He was meeting up with me and stuff. And I was, like, if I had known, I would have shut this down. So, what happened was, is my friend gave me her Snapchat that she doesn't use. And I added... The girl in Snapchat, I was like, yo, um, how do you know this guy? Um, and she's like, he's my boyfriend. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So I basically called her, explained, and yeah. And then he found out, and the way he dealt with it was a bit of a dick move. He just was like, I'm so sorry, Jazz. Like, I'm sorry, I love you. I didn't mean this to happen. I wanted to end things, but I didn't want to hurt the other girl. I was a bit like, well, you've hurt her now. She's upset and all this and that. And then eventually, so things ended with him and her, and then eventually things ended with me and him. 
and I'm glad I did because looking back, Alex to him, very, very different people. So in a nutshell, things ended, I moved on, met Alex and I have never been ever more happy with Alex than I ever been. And that is my life today. Welcome to my really, really long video. But, but I hope you enjoyed my little long update of the video and my next video will be my back to school haul. So stay tuned for that and I will see you all later with the, my next video.